Now you know what those kids have got it going on, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> that little Madeline, she said she sings with a microphone. Yeah. I believe it. <laughs> well, I just want to give you greetings. We're thrilled to be here. We've been looking so forward to it. And um, brother and sister Terry and Terry are two of our very favorite people in the whole entire world. We just love them to pieces, and they have shown us such kindness, and that just means a great deal to us. But um, when we were singing this song, he's magnificent, and he's wonderful, and so forth, I, um, I heard this scripture, as he is, so are we in this world. And um, a lot of times when we're having dark nights of the soul, our growth periods, um, we don't feel like we're so as he is. <laughs> But it's still the truth that as he is, so we are. And um, it is the Christ in us. That's what's being developed. Christ is being formed in us so that the mind of Christ can absolutely function through us at all times, Hallelujah. in all situations, in all circumstances. In the home, we want to be as he is. In the marketplace, we want to be as he is. And it's just... As the Christ is being formed within us and comes to that maturity level, it's just going to be our nature. We're not going to have to stop and think about things. And the more, like our precious sister said, that we are in that communion with him, you know, just kind of, everything else just kind of falls away and he becomes our glory. So I just bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me just first of all say up front how privileged I am to be here and uh, really see and know the gift of God that's in uh, your pastors, Pastor Taylor and uh, Pastor, his wife, and, and uh, just the sense of what I feel in this place tonight. Um, I want to start off just a little slow here tonight, get acquainted with you a little bit, but first of all, let me share with you. Uh, well, let's pray before we get to it. Father, I thank you for the privilege of being in this house tonight. God, I ask you in the name of Jesus, God, to, to let me be yielded totally to you, God, to speak the words of God that you placed in my heart concerning this place, concerning this area. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, God, that you touch lives, that you touch spirit, soul, and body in every man, woman, boy, and girl here tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I really appreciated the ministry uh, when Brother Terry was uh, ministering with the kids. We had a guy that came in our, um, I'll be up and down on this thing. So, uh, we had a guy that came from South Africa that was supposed to have been a great apostle, but uh, uh, there was a service going on and uh, the children came up and began to pray for the ministers and everybody. And he backed up and said, uh, no, I'm an apostle. The children can't touch me. So I said, well, uh, you know, he didn't have the same ministry as Jesus because Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me yeah, for such is the kingdom. Yes. See, there's two things. He didn't have the ministry of Jesus and he didn't have the kingdom ministry because uh, those ministries are open and they'll touch not only children uh, that are uh, uh, children indeed, but sometimes those that are not quite as spiritual as you think they ought to be. How many of those are some immature people still in the body of Christ? Yes. Are you listening? Yes. See, and I, I, I run across people all the time that, that have this mindset that uh, they've already arrived so they can't, uh, they can't lower themselves to begin to uh, touch creation. And let me share with you, uh, two days ago, God began to deal with me and I, as I was praying, God, what do I say when I go into this great house in, in uh, South, South Carolina? What do I say? What do I, do I give them from you? And God began to deal with me and he said, uh, he said to me, first of all, one word, restore. Amen. So I said, God, wh what do you mean? Explain to me. And I, I began to see, uh, as it were, in a vision uh, a vine over this area, Brother T Terry, that had begun to come up, but yet it was cut off uh, before it began to bear the fullness of its fruit. And so God began to tell me uh, that, that uh, He is going is beginning a work of restoration 
for what he desires to do out of this house. Somebody say this house. This house. I'm not talking about another house across the way or another city, another place. I'm talking about this house. So since I'm talking about this house, I'm talking to you tonight because you're in this house. See, I'm, if, if, you, if, you don't have, if you've never had a problem uh, that, that's not, that you don't feel was fully solved, then I'm not talking to you. If you've, never, uh, if you've never had a promise that was broken, then I'm not talking to you. Come on. If you've never had anything that you felt like the enemy took away from you, then I'm not talking to you. But if you have been in either any of those categories, uh, I want to tell you tonight, you know, if you ever uh, remember when you first come to the Lord, maybe as a minister, I had great dreams whenever God began to give me a uh, vision of ministry. And I desired to be able to, to touch creation. I, I started on the street corners of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, preaching, and I was started to by praying for winos and by, by praying for homeless folk and, and those that didn't have any hope. Yes. Hallelujah. Hello? Praise God. I know y'all don't, don't know me too good, but you know who's inside of me, so... Yes, okay? Hallelujah. So here we are. Uh, in, in that, that's always been my position in my ministry is to find those that, that, that didn't have any hope. Now, I'll grant you there's part of me, Brother Terry, that wants to, to get somewhere where there's a mature people and where we can just uh, get in there and open up the Word and, and grow. But but I want to tell you there's a work to be done yet. Yes, it yes. is. Come on, they used to tell me whenever I was just young in ministry, before that great uh, day of the Lord comes, there's going to be a falling away first. Well, I believe there's, there's been a lot of falling away uh, that's happened in, in all my 47 years of ministry. Uh, there's been a lot of falling away. But my word today that God gave me two days ago is restore. Yes. Because, uh, see, whenever you have been on the road and whenever you've been walking in the way of the Lord so long, uh, what happens? You know, wh you know where you were sitting whenever somebody began to steal your, your dreams? Mm. Well, it might it, it might have been, you know, at, at home. It might have been... Uh, you know, uh, in a sort of secular uh, situation, but but most likely you're sitting in church. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. The biggest thief of your dreams and your hopes and your visions has been in church when people got up and began to tell you uh, and began to bring forth a sin consciousness to you. Are you listening to me? I didn't say there's that I didn't say there's no there, there, there's no such thing as sin. I didn't say that. People are proving every day that there's still such a thing as sin. Right. Hello. But the reason they're proving it is because they're still getting a sin consciousness. Yeah. And in that sin consciousness, we've been told how unqualified we are to walk in the kingdom of God. Amen, right. yes. Yeah. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. See, so now uh I began to read my Bible and he began to tell me something like uh, that you are a royal priesthood. Yes. Yeah. You are a chosen generation. Yes. Amen. Yeah. So I said, now is this the same people that God must, that, that the preacher said uh, he was talking to from the pulpit? Hmm. Come on. Amen. Now, when's the last time somebody told you you were royal? Probably the last time you heard Brother Terry. But, <laughs> but but see, whenever you begin to, and I know I'm in, in a different house, but, but I'm going to do what the Lord said for me to do if I may. And let's go, if you will, to the book of Joel. We're talking about restored. God began to uh, talk to me. And most of what I'm going to read is going to be in the Old Testament. But it's going to have, it's going to have a new covenant uh, uh, twist to it. In fact, we can go right over into the, into the New Testament and find a lot of what I'm, I'm going to read tonight. But in Joel, the second chapter... Praise your Father. Joel, Joel, the second chapter. And I'm going to start reading about verse 21. A very, very familiar. Very familiar scripture. Because whenever we talk about restoring, 
We have to first of all realize there's something being lost. Right. Uh, my, my heart really nowadays is, is very heavy when I begin to encounter the church. Because many of those that call themselves leaders in the church have compromised the message for popularity. That's right. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't want to come across hard because I'm, I'm kind of wrestling a little bit with, with this because I don't want to come across hard, but at the same time, I want us to realize that there, that there must be a people and there will be a people in plan, on planet Earth that is flowing in the fruit of what God has sown in the earth. My wife made a statement to me the other day. She saw a preacher that brought forth a good life word uh, on the internet the other day. And, and she, said, uh, she said to me, one thing I noticed is there was a lot of gray hair in the congregation. And one thing, one thing that concerns me now is are we passing the same uncompromised word and the same love for God on to our children? That's why this, is, this excites me. And sometimes it's easier whenever they have to come to church with us and whenever we, uh, they get to be, you know, my children, as long as they lived in my house, I said, you're going to church, let's get in the car. That's right. Hello, folks. And they still come to church today, ain't they? That's right. See, so we begin to realize that the, 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 the God, uh, he said the God of the good times is still God of the bad times. The trouble is we haven't lived like that. And whenever our children have seen us begin to buckle under the bad times, they've wondered, is this really the God that I'm hearing them preach about? Amen. That's right. Somebody love the Lord. Okay, Joel, the second chapter. That's good. That's good stuff, brother. Verse 21. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Somebody say, the Lord will do great things. The Lord, the Lord will do great things. things. The Lord will do great things. Be not afraid. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Be afraid. Ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do not, uh, wilderness do spring, for for the tree bear fruit. Somebody say the tree's bearing fruit. The fig tree and the vine. Now, can I stop just a moment and, and somebody to study the word a little bit? I want to uh, share with you. When I hear the fig tree, what do I think about? I think about the nation Israel. Okay? But he didn't stop there. He said the fig tree and the vine. Amen. When I think about the vine, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Yes. So he brings together natural Israel and spiritual Israel all under one here. Can you hear me? And the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Somebody say strength. strength. Look at your neighbor and say, where does your strength come from? You see, my strength doesn't come from going to church on Sunday morning. I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a pro-church guy. Just, just to clear, clarify that. These people run around and say they don't believe in the church. There's a little problem because I, I, I believe in God's church. Yes. Yeah. Not every building that says church, though, is God's church. But uh, come on, somebody love the Lord. They, all of us need a move of God, though. Be glad then, you children of Zion. Somebody say Zion. Zion. You see, there's something about being children of Zion because Zion is that place, that high place in Jerusalem. Yes, yes. Come on, where... Uh, where you're called if you're kings and priests unto God. That doesn't mean we never go into the valley and we never go into the low place because there's a need for us to go to the low place to take the fruit of what we got gathered on the high place. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Amen. He said, I'm the, the rose of Sharon and I am the lily of the valley. Yes. Yes. Right. Somebody hear what I'm saying? See, there's something about the rose of Sharon. They tell me it grows so high, the only place it grows is high in the tops of the mountains. And whenever somebody's been that high and gets around it, there's a fragrance. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, if some, you know, it's, 
there's a fragrance you can begin to, to smell. You ever smell the Lord? Brother Terry, I, I, I'm serious. I've been, I've been preaching before and all of a sudden I felt the Lord just kind of the, that sweet smelling savor. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say he's weird. <laughs> See, there's a sweet smelling savor about the Lord. Y'all don't have to get excited. I'll just preach anyhow. But whenever, whenever you smell, smell that fragrance of the Lord and you begin to understand, come on, he's been, come on, he's been that rose of Sharon. Amen. Yes. And see, there's something about the lily of the valley uh, that I found out that the lily of the valley uh, does a very uh, unique thing during the day. In, in the mornings, it raises up and opens up to whatever comes. But at the end of the day, it bows low and empties out whatever came into it. Yes. You see, there's, if, if you're not like the lily of the valley and you can't empty out all the stuff uh -huh. that comes your way during the day, but see, he's like that lily of the valley. He'll be there to help you catch it and dump it back out so you can start fresh a new day. Can somebody yeah. bless the Lord? Yeah. Now, <laughs> be glad in the children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. Now I don't believe, you know, there was a back in the 40s and all was what we call the latter rain. I don't believe we can put a time on what he's talking about here. A time frame and a time period. But he said he's given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Somebody say double. Double. We're going to get, we're going to hold on to that word double because I'm coming back yet. See, God's doubling. Not only is He giving you the, the blessing of the fig tree, but He's giving you the strength of the vine as well. He's giving you the former rain. See, some of us have been around long enough to know what the rain felt like. Come on. I mean, I'm talking about a real rain of the Spirit. Have you ever been in that? Come on, somebody, some of you need to put your umbrellas away tonight. <laughs> See, and there's a rain of the Spirit where God begins to rain on the just and the unjust. But see, there's something that happens even when He rains on the unjust. There's a, there's a brokenness and a, and a repenting and a coming to the Lord. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. See, so, and the floor shall be full of wheat. When it's, this floor here is like the threshing floor. There's things that happen on the threshing floor. Remember Ruth and, and Boaz? Yeah, yeah. See, whenever Ruth and Boaz uh, uh, found themselves on the threshing floor together, there was love bur birthed. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yes. I, there was nothing inappropriate that went on there. Contrary to what some people say, there was nothing inappropriate that went on there. But, but because there was integrity in Boaz. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. But there was a birthing. It's time for the church to come to, to, that, to that place on the threshing floor where we know Him. Amen. Yeah. Can you hear what I'm saying? Now, I, I, I met Him uh, whenever I was seven years old. I, I became acquainted with Him. But see, there's a fresh knowing of the Lord yeah. I believe the church needs to come to today yeah. that we begin to know Him uh, in the book of Daniel, he said, "Those that, in that day, those that do know their God, and the word know there is the same way Abraham knew Sarah. Yes. Come on, it's Yah does the, the, the word there. And it's like an intimacy. It's a oneness. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, it shocks me sometimes when we talk about, when we talk about, is Christ in us? The hope of glory. But yet, we keep our life over here separate. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Somebody around uh, our part of the country not, uh, a few years ago used to all the time say, now, I'm not talking about church, I'm talking about the real world. <laughs> and one day I said, now, wait a minute, what's more real? Because the Bible says everything you see was not made of things that do appear. So what's more real? Yes, come on. Come on. Yeah. What we call life and what we we see right here is temporal. That's 
Right. It's going to pass away. But those things that we don't see yeah. are eternal. Yes. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. See? So things begin to happen to strip us of what God... Let me share a couple of personal things. 2004, I'd come to a place that I didn't feel like there was anything I needed, Brother Terry. I didn't feel like they, they would sing a song in our church. Uh, uh, I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame and so forth. And I wouldn't sing it because I thought, I don't have any sorrows. I mean, God just blessed me and and I'll, and and my wife at that time. Uh, Just right after that, that same week, right after I, I stood, I said, "I don't have any." And I honest, honestly, I'd come to the place in the Lord that I didn't feel like I had sorrow, shame. Uh, God had blessed me. And that next week, my wife was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And we went through we went through a year. I sat by her her bedside for a year uh, while she. She went through hospice. God had healed her of tuberculosis when she was two years old. And several times during her 32 years of marriage had God, uh, had God touched her and, and healed over different things to heal our children. We'd stood in the pulpits uh, and she'd, she'd sing, uh, this is the place for miracles. And we'd see God heal. We'd see God do mighty things. In the midst of the, those services that were filled with faith, travel all all over the uh, East Coast with a tent and and just saw God do mighty things. But then, after a year, a year and one day, she said, I, the, the doctor said, uh, a year. She said, I, I'll not go uh, inside that year. And, and we thought we thought maybe God would turn it around. I held on to it, bleed, pray. But she knew. I knew when she. She knew something turned in her uh, in her head, and she knew when she was going to go on. So during that ordeal, that that year uh, on July fourth, two thousand five, she went on to be with the Lord. We gathered men and her children, our children, gathered around her, and and we received the impartation of whatever she uh, would leave, and the power of the Holy Ghost filled that room. But afterwards, I was devastated. I was. Uh, you know, I just had started a new business uh, in real estate, and and then the next two years was havoc on that. So ever dreams begin to go, things begin to happen, things begin to fall apart. Now either that look is that's never happened to you, or I know right where you're at. I don't. Amen, I know. <laughs> See, and things begin to fall apart. And I hear things from the pool block pit like, just get over it. <laughs> just, just, Suck it up. yeah, just, just get over it. And, and I wanted to stand up and say, you just get over it. Amen. But I remember whenever God began to revisit, and, and right now in the midst of my life, and I'm just trying to make this real, real to you by sharing uh, some of my stuff. I, I, God began to do something. First of all, He, he gave me a, a new companion that is uh, walking with me in the Lord and uh, has restored uh, what what had been lost. And Gail was Gail, and Cheryl Cheryl. I'm not trying to compare the two. I'm just telling you, God began to restore. Yeah. I began to listen to some old tapes, and I began to realize that some of the anointing, Brother Terry that I had walked in and some of the word that had come forth, uh, that, that I was not walking in that place. And there began to become a cry unto the Lord, God, I need your touch. I need something to begin to take place in my life. And God began to do a work of rest restoring. Yes. Let, me, let me move on a little bit here. The floors, verse 24, the floors shall be full of wheat. Come on, he said, you are, you being many are one bread. Yes. Come on, the wheat is what's ground and, and prepared and made. Sometimes you feel like you're ground and you feel like you've been crushed. 
But God can take that and He can make that into something that will fill you with life. Come on, how many know who the bread of life is? Amen. And we looked at each other was reading this coming down the road and said the fats shall be shall overflow with wine and she said what, what is fats I said I don't know but it must be a pretty big vessel <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah God shall overflow with wine and oil somebody say spirit, spirit. spirit. come on pour in the oil and the wine for the healing yeah. there's healing in this house tonight hallelujah. I looked over at you while brother Terry was singing this couple right here, and I saw a healing working and a restoring of what God uh, had desired for you. God said, don't give up on your dreams. Brother, there's some frustrations that you've been going through, but you watch God. You hold on to faith and you stand still whenever it looks like all hell is breaking loose, and you hold on and watch what God does. You stand there steadfast, sister, and let God continue to do that work. Somebody love the Lord. Amen. And watch what Joel says. I will restore unto you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm. I don't know what forms your locust and canker worm come in, but sometimes I look off of us like people. <laughs> I'm not here to gossip, y'all. I'm just telling you. Sometimes those canker worms that came my way to steal my dreams look like somebody. That's right. Yes. And the caterpillar and the palmer worm. See that when I when I hear the word worm at the end of these things, I only think about one person. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. That one that, 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 that somewhere in the scripture, somewhere I've, I've got in my mind that so there'll be a time when we'll look and say, is this the worm or is this, is this the man? Is this the one that deceived the nation? Come on, we've blown up the devil. Yeah. But let me tell you something. I, I, there was a movie not way back, way back years ago. It said, uh, I, I shrunk the baby or I shrunk the kids. Or I first, uh, come on, well, I shrunk the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah, he's just, a, he's just a grub worm. Somebody bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat. Look at somebody and say, you're going to eat. I'm going to eat. Hallelujah, I'm going to eat gonna from the eat. table of the Lord. Yes. You know what? What God got much better than religion told me. Hallelujah. Back whenever I was first starting to preach and I was a little Baptist boy, they told me, Oh, and that great marriage supper in the sky, we're going to sit down and there's going to be a table spread. Yes. <laughs> of course, I was going to have to go through tribulation before I got there. Yeah. I yeah. said, so I'm already going through tribulation. I'm kind of getting hungry now. <laughs> but, but see, hallelujah. Eat of the Lord. Yeah. If you eat his word and drink his blood, come on, eat his flesh. What is his flesh? His word. His blood is spirit. If we eat and drink of him, can I tell you, it's much better than... Yes. Oh, somebody, yes. somebody said, well, I'm on. Get up there and have me a big old bowl, bowl of pinto beans. I said, I was raised on pinto beans. I don't want no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, we still like pinto beans. <laughs> but I said, that's about all we have. But every day we have pinto beans growing up. <laughs> Pin, pinto beans and once in a while we had some taters to go with them. Somebody said potatoes, but I don't know. I said we call them taters. <laughs> and whenever, whenever we begin to understand that what God's got for us to eat is better than what we we wanted to portray. Uh, yes, somebody loves the Lord. Yeah. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never, somebody say never. 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 Wait a minute. Never. What does that mean? Never. My people shall never be ashamed. Now, I want to go on record saying if you walk in a place of being ashamed, and I'm not I'm not gonna ask for you lift your hands whether we close our eyes or not. But I found myself at times, Brother Terry, in a place of being ashamed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes I've been in the middle of the church house and been ashamed. Amen. 
But whenever God says, my people, does that include you? Yes. My people shall never be ashamed. Then I have to realize if there's shame that comes to us, it's coming from a different source. It's not coming from God. God uh, Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who, who are in Christ Jesus. Yes. Now, they tell me the original translation just had a period right there, but we're going to say, We walk not out of flesh, but out of the Spirit. And I have no problem with that uh, because I believe if you're in Christ Jesus, uh, that's your desire is to walk after the Spirit. Yes. And somebody hear what that's I'm right. saying? Yeah. See, and whenever we understand that God's not come to us to bring to us a spirit of shame. That's right. Mm -hmm. We've come through generations that have brought shame through their messages, that have brought shame through their condemnation. But let me tell you something, the Word of God begins to identify us as kings and priests unto God. And I don't know about you, but I've never seen a king and priest, I've never seen royalty walk around with a spirit of shame. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Praise God. Can you hear what I'm saying? Now, yes. there's some I'm sure have from, from the NAB because they're just men and women and need God just like you do. But, but I'm, I'm telling you, if you're kings and priests unto God, it's time to hold your head up. Yes, right. amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. See, we're in a day whenever uh, that I hear people, stuff like, well, if they're Christians or if they, you know, there's either there's a spirit working, there's either a spirit of elitism uh -huh. where people are carrying themselves like they're above everybody else. Yes. Like the brother I was telling you about that didn't want the children to pray for him. Or there's a spirit of, of having to be down here so low that you've got to suffer all this stuff for the Lord. Right. But if you realize who you are, I'm not only a king and priest, but I'm also the answer uh, if Christ is dwelling in me, what's dwelling in me is the answer for hurting people. Yes, man. I'm not talking about just from the pulpit now. We've got to get it out of the pulpit. Yeah. Because that if we go to Ephesians 4, we begin to find out apostle, prophet, and pastor, and teacher is getting from the material of the saints for the work of the ministry. The ministry will never be completed in the four walls. Yes, we need the four walls. We need some place to come in and to be refilled, but it's got to begin to go into the streets. It's yeah. got to begin to go into the highways yeah. and head just like God, like Jesus Himself. He said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. And you know why we haven't seen that? It's because the lively stones haven't known where they fit. <laughs> yep. If we really went around the room and got honest answers, uh, you know, we'd find we'd find some, at least a percentage, that probably would say, "Well, I don't know where I fit in the body." <laughs> there was a brother one time lived a few miles. Uh, we home only about six miles from Alabama in Georgia, and uh, he lived over in a Alabama, and uh, he w would come uh, into our services every once in a while. He come to me one time. He said, uh, said, "said brother, I'm just really." Uh, Really don't know what to do. Said my wife has left me, and and then he, he said she 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 cussed me out and she called me a name, uh, and he, he mentioned what the body part was, and then all of a sudden he started shouting. I said, brother, what you shouting about? He said, I, I finally know what part of the body I am. <laughs> so, so you know, <laughs> if we went around. Do we really identify with the body of Christ? Are we identifying with our circumstances? I'm finding, I'm finding more people that identify with a negative economy than identify with a God that's more than enough. Are you listening? I find more people that identify with depending on a job or depending on the government or depending on something like that, then I'm finding people that's depending on the Lord. You know, I'm glad today I don't have to depend on the government. Are you listening? I'm glad I don't have to depend on the, the, the things of this world. 
Come on, God, God said, yeah, listen to me. Because God said to tell those people in Bath, South Carolina that I am about to do a work of restoring. Brother Terry, I saw it upon you. I saw God said to me that there's been an anointing that you identified with years ago that men had come and, and systematically, like the canker worm and the caterpillar, it's all the same uh, insect. It goes from, from one stage to another. Uh, that, that systematically take them. But God said it's time for you to stand up and begin to take your place because God said the, the vine that was cut down and cut off in its youth that God's going to begin a move of God and God's going to begin a move right here. So they said, out of this little place, you see, there's the thing. There, can I tell you, nobody was expecting Jesus to be born in Bethlehem. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. But see, the Messiah came in that little place and He came uh, and humbled Himself. Can you hear what I'm saying? But God said, I'm going to restore. Now, turn with me, if you, if you will, to Isaiah. Isaiah, the 61st chapter. And this is where, this is the same passage of Scripture in Mark 4 where Jesus picked up whenever, whenever He was in the temple and He picked up and began to read. They tell me that, that historically uh, what happened and the reason they wanted to stone Him is He went up, there were chairs uh, set and there was supposed to be one assigned for the Messiah in that place. And whenever He got there, whenever it was His turn to get up and read, He went over and sat down in that chair and took his place. And then he began to read out of the scripture in Isaiah, and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound. Can I tell you, he's still anointed for the same thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Why did I say that? Because the spirit of religion will bring you under bondage. Yes. Yes. The spirit of religion will bring you to a place that you can't Oh, not only proclaim liberty to the captives, but you become captive yourself. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to com comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. Somebody say the oil of joy. The oil of joy for mourning, the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness. Hallelujah. Come on, what's in the trees of righteousness? We just read it out of Joel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The strength of Israel and the strength of the vine. Yeah. Hallelujah. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste places. Now let's pause just a moment. I wonder if I'm the only one that can look back and see some old waste places. I wonder tonight if, 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 if I'm the only one that can look back and say, okay, God, I thought you was going to do something great there, but I guess I just missed it. But I hear God saying to me, I'm going to restore those old waste places. They shall rise up, raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. God said to me, Brother Terry, that, <laughs> that the Augusta area had been like, become like a waste city. But God said, I'm about to raise up and begin to restore and repair a move of God. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? It's not just here, but this is one of the places God said 
for me to declare prophetically that God's about to restore Hallelujah. some of those things that you thought was lost in days gone by, somebody bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Hallelujah. The desolations of many generations and strangers shall stand, shall stand and feed your flocks and your sons and the sons of your of the alien or those from another uh, another country, another place, shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. In other words, you're not going to be in this all by yourself because God look at somebody and say, God's about to send some help. Amen. Hallelujah. God's about to send some help. I don't want to put it out in the future. Uh, he's a present help in a time of trouble. Yeah. But God's going to raise up those that will walk with you, that will stand with you, that will look to hold your hands up. But ye shall be but ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Hello, kings and priests. Hallelujah. Hello. The priests of the Lord, thank you. I had one re <laughs> Priests of the Lord, men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the gen uh, of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For ye, what, what? Look at somebody say, the time for lack is over. Amen. The time for lack is over. The time for lack is over. Hallelujah. I, I was meditating today on, on, the, on the 23rd Psalm. Y'all familiar with that? The Lord is my shepherd. And I, the Lord stopped me right there. The Lord is my shepherd. Because what does that mean? That means he's my protector. Yes. Hallelujah. Whenever the lion, I, I know from David's writings there, he said, when the lion came, God helped him slay the lion when the bear came. Yes. Come on, it made him ready for Goliath. How I many know that? That's right. Yes. But then he said, I shall not want. The word want there means being lack. Yes. Come on. You're not going to be found wanted. Somebody bless the Lord. Oh Are you listening to me? Now, most of, I, I'll admit, most of my life, Brother Terry, even, even though educationally and everything, I, I gained enough education. I worked in, in some uh, secular jobs, but a lot of times I walked away from many of them to, to feel the, 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 the call of God on my life and, and wound up uh, looking like the most foolish person in the world because I walked away something from things that were was helping me, and I worked to raise my family a lot of times because ministry, uh, you know, it, it kept us going maybe from place to place, but it didn't do the extra stuff it took to raise a family. And somebody said, well, uh, that ought not be. If you use a call to God, God just, well, God did, God did. He gave me strength to work sometimes. Right. Somebody bless the Lord. Somebody, these, these guys out here just pray God put me in full-time ministry. So, well, I want to say, well, get on the job and prove you can work some uh, for a full time. That's right. Because God, we think we've got to dress up all our resumes and all for the world so we can get better jobs, but then we want to go to, go to God with all our uh, insecurities and all our weaknesses and all our slackness. Come on. That's right. Not long ago, was it, for me, was some guys that were supposed to, they want to be in full time ministry singing, but they were bumming uh, places to sleep off of somebody else. They were laying around, they wouldn't work, wouldn't do anything, and, and uh, we began to look back, and there was a whole trail, they'd go somewhere, and they'd, they'd bum all they couldn't, and they'd have to go somewhere else, because sooner or later, their singing wasn't good enough to keep them there. Uh -huh. Hello, y'all. Right. Uh -huh. right. Somebody said, well, my God's going to supply all my needs, according to his riches and glory. I'm meddling now, I'm sorry, but, uh, but I, said, I said, yeah, the same one that says he's going to supply your riches, all your riches. I also said, if you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> Hello, church. I don't know what that was free, y'all. Was anyway. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Verse seven. For the sh for your shame, this is where I'm going. Remember the word double. Yes. For your shame, over in Joel, everything was double. Former rain, the latter rain. Israel and the vine. Everything began to be doubled. But he said, for your shame. If you've, never, if you've never been in that place and don't know what shame is, 
then I'm not talking to you. I would advise you to take this just in case you need it, though. For your shame ye shall have double. Not double shame, double blessing. For your confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double everlasting joy. Come on, somebody say everlasting joy. Everlasting. I don't know how you can double everlasting joy. Hell, I don't know how you can double everlasting joy. Peter said it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. I don't know how you can double that, but he said for your shame, he's going to give you double, and he's going to give you an everlasting joy. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery. I want to stop at seven. Because for your shame, he's going to give you double. Now, can, can somebody come to the music? I'm going to minister for a little bit. I, I feel like led to stop there. But I'm going to tell you tonight Thank you, Jesus. that God is in the restoring business. Whenever Brother Terry was prophesying to you, I saw it. You're what I came here for. Because over the years, dreams, visions, desires have been robbed from me. And even at one time you were in a place where you didn't feel like you lacked or wanted anything. But you've seen some hard days. But God says, stand up and give me a hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, that double joy comes to my soul. Hallelujah. And God, that you shall begin to open the, the vats of heaven and begin to pour out her a blessing. That she will not have room to contain and in the name of Jesus. Sister, I see your hands. Hold your hands out like this. God, I thank you, Lord. God, the enemy has tried to bring her to a place that she hadn't felt worthy. But God, in the name of Jesus, God, we speak. Sister, I see something opening up in the heavens for you. Hallelujah. Not just material. I, not just material. I see the material coming. I see a restoring of that inner joy. A restoring of that anointing that flows like a river. Father, I thank you, Lord, for these hands that have laid hands on people before and seen a mighty healing. God, that you begin to restore that anointing. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Get ready, my sister. God's getting ready. Send them your way. Loose 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 Stretch your hands this way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see the oil of the Lord flowing through you and into your hands. Thank you, Lord. Into those that you touch. Father in Jesus.
something when we look at it and say, don't you? Blow it like that. Blow it away. Blow it away. <laughs> Rejection, shame is gone in the name of Jesus. Everlasting joy, double over. Double over in Jesus. There's something about you, sister. I don't know. I saw you walk out here. I said, well, I was not leave. But there's something. I, I see your pauses. I see years and years where you're set and served ministry. You pause it after you pause it. That's went into you. And God said, I'm going to begin to draw out. Out of the wells of salvation. God said he's made you a well of salvation. God said he's made you a well of salvation. That, that, that means that the salvation you've realized is not just for you, but it's for others. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we call forth. Come forth. Come forth. Waters of life. Come forth. Yes, says the Lord, I have caused the wells to be opened in you, and out of your belly have I not said, shall flow rivers of living water, says the Lord. Let not your intimidation of the pulpit drive you away from pouring out those wells, because I shall pour out wells. And there are some that you have shook your head and said, I wonder if they will ever realize and they will ever come to the Lord like they should. And God says, out of you will come the simplest word. The simplest words that shall begin to draw them to the Lord and begin to draw them to salvation. God, we call forth the wells of salvation. Come forth. Come forth. Somebody love the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the
love. I want you to just let him saturate you and embrace you with that love tonight. Yes, sir.